Today I'm going to work on a little quilt. It's called, um, I believe, Fields and Furls. It's a variation of a log cabin. Sometimes there'll be like a red in the center to symbolize the heart and the hearth. And sometimes there's a yellow to symbolize light and, uh, I guess, family. Okay, so let's get going. I'm going to tell it to start at the start point. So we have picked a point on the last row, which just happened to be the last stitch. So the machine can orientate itself and figure out where to move to next. So it's going to move now to the first stitch of the next row. I'm going to hop over there and um, pull up the bottom thread. Okay, so now it's going to start to stitch. Doing this edge to edge, even though there is a border, it's very small. It's about two and a half inches. So it would just probably add confusion as it's a very busy print. It just makes more sense to do it edge to edge. The pattern we've chosen is called Bellflower. Every second row has been inverted and um, turned left to right. That way it gives it the balance between the left side and the right side of the quilt. Metler polysheen is our preferred thread, especially for something that's going to get washed a lot because it's color fast. And the needle I'm using is an SEK 90, which is the ballpoint jersey needle. It gives the best performance on this machine. It does so really fast. Turned the machine up to about 75% of capacity because it is kind of a swirly design and you're not going to have too many geometric jerks and stops and starts so I don't have to worry about thread breaking on those tight corners because they really aren't any. This is one of the built-in designs on the Bernina Chematic system. At least I think it is. It might be from our previous system. We had another system before this and we were able to save all our digital designs and convert them to BQM so we can stitch them out on the Bernina system. On this one we're using the same color thread top and bottom, which we don't always do, but it seemed to blend really nicely with both the front and the back of the quilt. We didn't want to use too dark of a thread because you don't want to overpower those light colors. And if you look closely at the quilting, you can see that it just makes the impressions in it. You don't really even see a color. Which is kind of nice when you've got a, a lot of contrast in a quilt, which this particular quilt has. It's definitely a dark side and a light side. started an inch and a half from the top and then we and the bottom and then I brought that down to three quarters of an inch sometimes I do a bit more but this is a small quilt so really right now it's three quarters of an inch at the top and about an inch and a quarter at the bottom but that little extra half inch is going to get used up in the quilting so when we get to that point we'll of course check it to make sure that we do have three quarters of an inch left at the bottom after the design is dropped if not, then we'll make our adjustments in the last two rows. I use this pattern a lot. It covers really well and it doesn't leave a lot of blank spaces, but it also has a very pretty pattern to it.
there you have bell flowers on an edge to edge log cabin quilt.